What's up everybody? My name is Jonathan. Welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about a new product from Klein Tools that was just came out actually a couple of months ago. But in a previous video we did, well I did, a video demonstration on the ideal digital circuit breaker finder and a few of its key features that are convenient for electrician or tradesman or DIYer and it's all coming up right after this. So this is Klein Tools ET310 Digital Circuit Breaker Finder. This particular model is pretty ergonomic. It's got a GFCI tester on the transmitter. Also lets you know if your GFCI outlet or any type of receptacle, regular 15 or 20 amp receptacle is wired correctly, has the indicating LED lights. It lets you know if it has an open ground, open neutral, open hot, reverse ground and hot, or ground, uh, hot to ground. It also is a transmitter, basically sends a signal to the receiver end that will help you sniff out a circuit to a designated circuit breaker. It also have a, on the receiving end of it, which I like is a storage um, space, storage spot for your transmitter so you can plug it in and carry it into your tool bag or your tool pouch. The receiving end of course you use to scan on your circuit breaker. What I like about what Klein Tools did from their previous model was they kind of did a little 10 degree offset here, a little 10 degree bend here and the narrow nose has like a dark transparent tip where you where it basically shows you the indicator light so that way you can not only audibly hear the receiver picking up the signal from the transmitter but you can also see it visually as well it has an on and off button in the back neck of the device and a reset button which they added uh, which is really convenient because now you can switch between on and off and also a reset in case you want to maybe you had a bad reading Maybe you want to just reset and find another circuit. So basically you would turn it on and you hear that audible sound. You see a green light. Now this doesn't exactly mean that the you found the breaker or you found the, the, the circuit on the circuit breaker. It's just basically you know, you know it's operating normally and it's ready to scan. And once then you have an LED in the back of the neck of it, shut it off, you see that there's there's a red indicating light area which will tell you that you have it has found and confirmed finding the circuit on the circuit breaker or the correct circuit breaker. What's really cool about it is that since it has that bit of a little offset, you can really move the device more comfortably in its ergonomic handle here. Um, it's also a really tough to tester too. So what Klein Tools does nowadays, they make their all their testing equipment tough. So if you could drop it two feet, six feet, eight feet, ten feet, it won't. It'll absorb the impact and it'll still operate normally. It is compatible with its, with its previous model's accessories, the ET300 accessories. Uh, the two-prong accessory you can use on the transmitter. Even though it does come with a ground, you can still use it. You will have a middle, the middle indicating LED light will turn on, which doesn't mean it's not working. It, 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 it does work. It will still receive a signal. You can also purchase the three-prong uh, device type alligator clip, and it, that would securely hold your third prong, your ground prong. It doesn't mean exactly you'll get all two lights, you'll still get the single light. It'll just safely store and secure the third prong from any outside elements or damage from outside 
uh, the uh, accessory. Klein Tools also features um, its, ex its additional accessories. As I said, with the alligator clip and three prong, you can also use with two prong uh, alligator clips. They also come with a three prong adapter. So let's say you have two prong receptacle and you need to find out if it's, if it's properly grounded. They come with an, a regular plug-in adapter that you can also replace typically at a nearby hardware store, Home Depot, or big box store. But they come with it and you can actually plug it in and test to see if there's proper ground. You can also still use it to scan for your breaker as well, to scan which breaker is feeding power to which outlet or which circuit. One thing about it is that I noticed that comparing this to the ideal digital circuit breaker finder is that it is the receiving end it doesn't feature a non-voltage contact tracer or contact tester. As you saw in the previous video with the ideal uh, digital circuit breaker finder, the receiving end can also sense uh, current in wires and that's a pretty cool major step up. You know, if not for nothing Klein Tools, if you guys are going to make something new and more, you know, reliable, more compact or more just more dependable device, you should add on your next, if you come up with next model, kind of make it a little more convenient to have a little non-voltage contact tester feature to it as well. But who knows, maybe, maybe the next model, the ET311. Who knows, right? Why don't we, I'm going to show you guys how it works. But before we do that, I also want to talk about its previous model compared to the new model. Now, in the previous model of the Klein Tools ET300 Digital Circuit Breaker Finder, it was pretty much a straight end device. Uh, you had to hold it at 180 degrees, scan up and down, and yeah, it, it will find the, the dedicated breaker. But there were issues with that that I had problems with. The one big issue I had was with the on and off button. Yeah, the on and off button basically would turn on. If you stored it away in your tool in my tool bag, uh, I would constantly hear it going off, going on. I would have to take it out, turn it off, hold it down for two seconds, turn it off. The button was so sensitive on the ET300, it just became a problem and it continuously, did, you know, continuously drain my 9 volt battery so I have to always constantly change the battery they also had what they also got rid of was the rubber mold of the ET300 model I didn't see why that what that was a reason to get rid of the rubber mold the rubber molding was pretty pretty well thought of to protect the device from shock or maybe rubbing against other um, furniture or what have you but it you know it also lessened the you know lessen the chance of touching or accidentally hitting the button in the tool bag if you store it away but it would still happen depending on how much have you know how much you have in the tool bag if it's a crowded tool bag and what have you um, but with this model I really think they did a good job with the on and off and reset button they have it nice and flushed here you won't have any problems of it turning on and off in your toolbox or your tool bag um, and I think that's only the one flaw to it other than that let's try it out Let's, let's, let's give it a whirl. So here's my kitchen GFCI outlet. Now, as you can see with the gray, the green little LED lights operating normally. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push, um, plugged in the transmitter. Now this transmitter is gonna show also the correct wiring on the GFCI. And this gray button right here, right? That's the test the GFCI, test for operations, making sure it's working properly the way it's supposed to. So we're going to plug it in, all right? So now you see the two indicating lights here. Uh, that means that it's wired correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the GFCI, see if it trips by pushing the button, the test button on the, the transmitter. As you see, the GFCI tripped. Now I'm going to hit the reset and it should come on. There you go. So now you can test your GFCI outlets or any GFCI protected outlets that are branched from this uh, GFCI and test to see if they're all operating normally. But now, since we got the transmitter in, we're gonna use the receiver on the panel and find out which breaker this device, uh, this GFCI is uh, connected to. All right, so here's my panel. 
at the door open here. So these are all the circuit breakers. And um, here's my panel schedule. Now, usually panels, electrical panels have a panel schedule. It's supposed to tell you which breaker is providing power to which circuit or to which area in your home or in an office. Now scan it. Now I know, I know which breaker it's on, but for education purposes, we're gonna test it out. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how this works, and that way um, you guys understand how it basically operates. So we're gonna turn on the button here. So now it's it's operating normally. So it's ready to it's ready to find that circuit breaker. So what you want to do is you start from the circuit for, uh, first circuit breaker down. And you're going to hear the audible tone go crazy. See, it's going to go a couple of times on red. You got to do one more scan. Right? Go up. Go down. And I found my breaker. So let's take a look at the transmitter. I'm going to shut it off by press, holding down the button for two seconds and now it's off. Let's go find out if the transmitter is now off. And as you can see, the transmitter, the LEDs on the transmitter lights are off. So that means now we successfully found the circuit breaker for this circuit or for this GFCI. So there you have it. So once you have the breaker off and, your tra and the transmitter LEDs are, lights are off, you can now safely work on repairing any damage in damaged wires or replacing the device. Always make sure before ever if you do not feel you don't ever feel comfortable working with electrical in your own home and your DIYer contact your local contra uh, electrical contractor make sure they're insured and bonded. The ET310 is an improvement it's very accurate uh, the, it ranges for a hundred feet by the way so if you were to plug this into an outlet you have a range between 0 to 100 feet. Uh, anything over that, you may possibly, most likely, you're not going to get a reading. So make sure you're close, you're at least within 100 feet of the electrical panel. Also, when working with electrical, work with power off. Okay, make sure you're, by using this device, you can be sure that whatever outlets or light fixtures or switches you're working on are are safely off. That way you can work safely without injuring yourself or others. Now this is actually compatible with the ET310 transmitter. Okay. Um, now I know that in a video that I posted on Instagram I said that it wasn't and that was because I actually ran into an issue where I was a little well over 100 feet away uh, and I figured that out the second time around when I used it. But within the 100 foot mark or the 100 foot area, I was able to reuse the original ET300 transmitter and it was actually compatible with the ET310. It actually did work. So if you do have an older model, maybe you only have the, the transmitter with a two prong, you can still use this ET310 receiver for that as well. You can also use ET. ET300 accessories, the allocator clips accessories, they still work well. Even if it doesn't have a three hole, uh, a three prong hole um, insert, you can use a two prong hole. Um, just be sure if you're going to be using the three prong transmitter on any two prong receptacles or GFCIs, or well, not GFCIs, but just regular receptacles, be sure you have an adapter and also make sure you screw down the center screw of that receptacle onto the adapter ground tab. You want to make sure it's grounded and that's the only way you can make sure it is grounded by screwing that into the, uh, the set screw uh, for the cover plate. My other flaw to this actually is that Klein Tools hasn't even provided a tool pouch for this uh, or you know most of their tools like their testing equipment tools have pouches. They come with a pouch so you can store away the testing, uh, your testers. Um, I'm surprised they still haven't come out with a testing, uh, you know, a, a pouch for this tester, uh, especially the longevity of it. Like, see how long the tester is. Really, Klein, 
Klein tools, you guys got to have to, you know, maybe your next model, when you come out with a non-voltage contact tester feature to it, maybe it would be wise to put a pouch with it too, to, to store it. Um, we all like to have tools, especially testing equipment that has their own tool pouches to store it away or storage pouch. So hopefully the next model you guys work on, you, you get there with that. Um, because that will really be a plus on your products too. Definitely a big sell. But other than that guys, my rate on this tool is, I'd say, I give it about four and a half. Um, it's very, it's very rugged, very tough. I mean, it, it makes a really cool, I mean, the transmitter feature is really cool. They did an excellent job with it. Uh, so now if you're the type that maybe has a ground fault tester and, you know, indicated for checking uh, wiring check and ground fault testing, and you don't have one, and you get yourself one, this, this tester, one of these, you have yourself a GFCI tester as well as, uh, you know, telling you whether your devices are wired correctly so that's a that's a plus one the storage very cool I like that you can just put it away and not worry about losing the other piece um, but just you know getting a tool pouch you might have to order a separate client tools tool pouch for it uh, or tool case testing case other than that guys the it's really solid I've used it a couple times already uh, it has some blemishing on it so um, I give it a 4.5 out of 5. Um, and my reason for that is because I like to see a non-voltage contact tester. It would be pretty cool. I mean, I thought it did have it at first, but a little disappointed it didn't. But other than that, what, you know, let me know what you guys think. And if you like this video, smash the like button. It's the thumbs up button down below. If, um, if anything you have in mind, if any of you have like any questions, or maybe if you have, you know, a few opinions yourself you want to add on uh, make sure you leave it in the comment section down below also I'll leave a link for this device or where to purchase this and I'll leave that in the links down in the description box down below also if you haven't already and it's your first time on the channel hit the subscribe button make sure you tap the bell notification and tap all you want to get all notifications not personalized not none you want to get all because do tool, we do a lot of tool review videos, uh, live Q&As. Thanks for watching. This is Jonathan with you here today. Um, just rem always remember, wear your personal protective equipment. Watch each other's back. Help one another out. And I'll see you guys next time. You like that video? Why don't you smash that like button down below? Also, if you got any questions, leave a comment down below. If you want to see some tool reviews, tool demonstrations, or even some job site tag alongs, then what are you waiting for? Subscribe! Till next time, guys. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you on the next one.